Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are going to uh, take the section one of the part five of the series of eight tutorials that we are building upon uh, with the Contoso web app. So if you have not seen the first four videos, please do complete that uh, series to uh, come to this part and to get the maximum benefit out of these videos, please watch from start to finish and follow the code written in the video description of the YouTube tutorial. So these previous tutorials have worked with a basic data model that was composed of three entities. Now we are obviously going to use the Visual Studio 2017 as we have been using in the past four videos and we are going to cover the data model which is being customized by specifying the formatting, validation and database mapping rules related to the student model. Now the next tutorial which will be the final and the section two of the part five will cover the addition of more entities. So that will cover next type attribute. Uh, now the student page is currently displays the time of enrollment, the date enrollment date. Typically date fields show only the date and not the time. So time is somewhat undesirable. So we want to get rid of that time and only show the date. That's what we are going to do. So now we'll update the models slash student.cs with the code. Now that code is in the video tutorial or found in the Microsoft tutorial documentation link found in the video description. That, so we'll actually go for the Visual Studio solution and I have copied some code from the documentation and I will um, just copy the entire student class and paste the code. So we'll see that we have added a using statement component dot component model dot data annotations and this is the part of data annotations. So we'll come to that in a bit. What is data annotation is about. Now the data type attribute specifies a data type. Again, if we go back to the slide, the data type dot date doesn't specify the format of the date that's displayed. By default, the date field is displayed according to the default formats based on the server's cultural info. The display format attribute is used to specify the date format. So display format, this is the part that is actually the uh, display format, date format string in that particular format that you want and apply format in edit mode equals true. So if we go back to the code, this is what this part is. Display format is actually responsible for formatting the date string to year, month and day or day, month, year. Now, um, in this case, the date should be displayed not the date and time because of this display format. Now, this data type dot date doesn't specify the format of the date that's displayed. By default, the date field is displayed according to the default format based on the server's culture info. Uh, now, and as I told that the, this display format is used to explicitly specify the date format. Now, this apply format in edit mode, it specifies that the formatting should also be applied to the edit UI. That means edit user interface that will be presented in front of you, you can edit it there also. Some fields should not use apply format in edit mode. For example, the currency symbol should generally not be displayed in an edit text box. The string length attribute, now we'll read, um, the data validation rules and validation error messages can be specified with attributes. The string length attributes specifies the minimum and maximum length of characters that are allowed in a data field. The string length attribute also provides client side and server side validation. Now, next we'll update the student model as per the code in the documentation, which I have already copied on my clipboard. And I will load the um, Visual Studio 
um, and um, just copy it over everything control V okay so you have seen that there are some string length attributes 50 string length 50 and uh, first name cannot be longer than 50 characters right so um, next we'll navigate to the student page and create a new and enter the name longer than 50 characters right so control f5 to run the application So, project is loaded. Now, that student index page is in front of me. So, I will create a name longer than 50 characters. So, to create new, um, just an abrupt string of names. So, it could exceed 50 characters. And then copy it. And paste it in the first name so you can see as you tab away so it uh, gets me all these uh, validation errors the first the field last name must be a string with maximum length of 50 the first name length cannot be longer than 50 characters right so even before the creating the list it is giving me the validation errors great so next we will now look at the SQL Server Object Explorer and click on right click and view designer. So I have got now last name and first mid name fields as nvarchar50 instead of nvarchar max for both the fields as we have seen last. Great. So next is, we have already seen that. Now the preceding image shows the schema for the student table. The name fields have the type in varchar max because migrations has not been run on the database. When migration is run, so we have already run the migration. Okay. Now next is, we will update the student model once again to show some more stuff on the column attribute so I will just highlight the code existing code paste with the copied code I have got now this column first name and with the string length 50 which was coming from the earlier iteration now back to the slide now the attributes can control how classes and properties are mapped to the database in this section the column attribute is used to map the name of the first mid name property the to the first name in the database so this column first mid name is mapped to the column first name in the database table student table when the database is created property names on the model are used for column names except when the column attribute is used so here we have used the column attribute this is the column attribute so here it behaves differently so whichever um, is the column here it is first name so database when the migration is applied that the column name will change from the existing first mid name to first name okay 
Now, in addition of the column attribute, the column attribute changes the model back in the school context. So, we will go back again. And we will build the project. Control Shift B. Now, if I try to run this application, it's still building. I will show you what happens. Now, if the app is run before applying migrations, the following exception is generated. SQL exception, invalid column name, first name. So, let's see. So, control F5. Now, and students yeah so sql exception invalid column name first name right now to update the db we will build the project and open the package manager console in the project folder and add these two lines add migration column first name and update database so we will do that next in the tools, click on tools and new get package manager, package manager console. Now it's open. So I will, I have already built this project, but I will again build it. So build succeeded. Now package manager console. Let me open it up again. It has become hidden. Okay, yeah. So I'll just close this output window. This is the package manager console. I will copy, I will paste this code, add my integration column first name. And then update database. So tools, then you get package manager, package manager console, and I have got it all copied on my clipboard. I'll add migration column first name and let's wait for things to happen. And then update database, just hit enter. Done. So let's click on SQL Server Object Explorer. Click on the dbo.student, view the designer. Right, so now we have got this first name property instead of the earlier first mid name. Okay, so this proves a point that you know before the migration was applied, the name columns are of the type n varchar max and the name columns are now n varchar 50. And now the column name has changed from first mid name to first name. Next, we will go for the student entity update. So looking to the slideshow now we'll update the student model with the course code as per the documentation again and we'll so load this and then click on the student.cs and highlight everything and paste the code from the uh, clipboard Right, this is the new code. Now, here we'll have to explain a few things, the required attribute. 
Now let's go back to the code again. So we have got this required attribute. We have seen the explanation of string length earlier required attribute and then this display attribute. So we'll see what they mean. Now the required attribute makes the name properties required fields. The required attribute isn't needed for nullable, non-nullable types such as value types, date time, integer, double. So the things which are non-nullable you cannot get away with entering a null null value. It will not allow the SQL, it will not allow that. So you don't require this required attribute because that's non-nullable. But the types that cannot be null are automatically treated as required field. And the display attribute, display attribute again going back to the code specified display, display first name, display enrollment date, display full name. So what do they mean? They mean that the caption for the text box should be first space name, last space name, full name and then enrollment space date. The default captions had no space dividing the words, for example, last name. So finally, there is a full name calculated property. Full name is a calculated property that returns a value that is created by concatenating two other properties. Full name cannot be set, it has only a get accessor. Um, getting back to the code again, so it has got only a get accessor and it has been made out of a the concatenation of the first mid name and the last name. So that's it. In the next part we will create the all the extra entities. So watch out and if you like this video please put your comments, likes and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much.